Good morning, Park High School AP Human Geography students. We are back, right? We're back with another uh, PowerPoint that we're going to talk about today. This concerning chapter six, uh, three and six, four. This is uh, looking at the landscape of religions, right? And then also conflict within it. So let's dive in. All right. So uh, you know we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the architecture. Of, of different places. These are fairly straightforward. We got churches, we're going to have uh, mosques, we're going to have synagogues, we're going to have pagodas, we're going to have temples, right? We're going to have all those things. We're going to start off with churches. Keep in mind um, that, that denomination is going to change, right? And the architecture is going to change that. Catholic churches tend to be uh, heavily ornate, um, fancy, big, right? Uh, Protestant churches range, they can be, but they, they can be also be uh, very simple, right? And then Orthodox churches are going to have the domed spires, right? So you're going to see that. We don't see a lot of uh, domed churches in the United States because we don't have a lot of Orthodox Christianity, right? So there's some pictures for you to view as we move on. There's Protestant churches, right? And again, compare the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the St. Paul Cathedral, right, to... Um, the uh, Jehovah's Witness Church on on um, uh, Hinton, right, in Cottage Grove, and you'll see vast differences there, right? There's Orthodox Church, right? Notice the dome spires, right? Onion dome. Onion dome, right? That's going to be important, right? The onion dome. All right? Mosques are also going to range uh, from, from very big and very grand and ornate to very simple uh, in rural areas. Um, we do note that the space is arranged towards Mecca, right? That's a big feature uh, in, in mosques. Um, so there's a central courtyard, play, the prayer space is going to be aligned, and then the minaret is going to be huge, right? The minaret, again, that was an, that's an AP concept that comes up. So there's your, your spires right there, minarets right there, right there, right? Call to worship, right? Uh, there's your, again, there's your great temple, right? With the, with the Kaaba and all of that fun stuff. Right, Hindus, you don't have collective worship, right? Um, where where every everybody comes at a certain time, like you see in Judaism, uh, at a synagogue, like you see in uh, in Islam, right, at the mosque or you know, a church service, right? Um, so it, it's it's going to look a little different. You see it as a home of one or more gods. Um, we do see uh, kind of a local thing here, right? So it's going to look a little different, right? Um, and you see all sorts of. Right? Including Angkor Wat, right, which was a Hindu temple um, at one point. Largest religious structure in the world. Woo! All right, Buddhists they, and Shintos, they use a pagoda. You will see, right, the architecture. You will see the curved roof line, right, and the Tory gate right here. So those are some things that you'll see um, in, in uh, a pagoda. Again, prominent elaborate, right, not exactly used for collective worship as well. Um, and and note the architecture there, right? Buddhist and uh, Shintoist architecture, again, Torge, you'll see some of those you know, kind of famous things as you move there. Uh, notice that relics are going to exist in many churches in, uh, and in, um, in Buddhist things, right? These are uh, religious artifacts that are associated with the life of the founder. Right, so it'll be a uh, you know a piece of the cross you'll see in your Euro uh, European churches or a um, cloth that was once worn by the Buddha or something like that. Something that, that people would want to travel to. So pilgrimage will come into that. All right? Got to talk about death scapes. The land, uh, you know, how do how do you deal with dead people, right, in this, in in each religion, right? So we see burial and entombment uh, in, in the three major monotheistic religions. That's kind of our standard practices. Uh, and then other methods you see creation. I'm sorry, cremation, not creation, right? Cremation, right? Uh, you know, the, the burning of, of the body, the ashes, right, being spread in different places. This is increasingly becoming popular in, in the United States, right? It's a question of, um, of space a lot of times, right? Um, you know, things like that, right? Other places you'll see exposure in places where you can't bury or cremate. Disposal at sea in Pacific Island countries, Micronesian countries, right? Uh, those also exist, but they're fairly minor. So there's your disposal of the dead. Notice there's catacombs, right? Places like New Orleans that have high water table aren't going to actually bury them. They're, they're going to they're going to have catacombs as well. There's your uh, cremation pyre, right? In India, there's your graveyard. Here's exposure. You know, one thing yeah. we should say about exposure is that means they're actually taking the body and leaving it outside <laughs> for nature to kind of retake the body. Right. Kind of your ashes to ashes piece. Right. Okay. 
Uh, so, uh, got to talk a little bit about settlements. Uh, first thing we, we should talk about, most importantly, is place name, okay? That you can tell, right, based on uh, the, the toponym, if you will, of, um, of, of a town where if, if it was settled by uh, Catholics or Protestants, right? Lots of saints, right? Saints, if you got saints, if you got Sands or Sao, right? San Francisco, Sao Paulo, right? You, uh, you're going to hear that associated with, with the Catholic Church. Right. Um, also, we talk about uh, um, utopian settlements. Um, Salt Lake City is going to be your best example of that. That uh, that the entire uh, city of Salt Lake City was was kind of created and surrounded around um, the, the Great Temple in in as the head of the LDS Church. All right. Uh, we look at organized spaces. We got to talk about hierarchical religions, right, versus autonomous religions, right. Best example of a hierarchical religion are going to be the Roman Catholic Church and the, and the Latter Day Saints Church, the the Mormons, right. Uh, Catholic Church broken into um, uh, provinces, dioceses, and parishes, um, and and they're run by you know uh, bishops and archbishops and things like that. Um, and so you'll see that. Sometimes you'll see in Protestant churches have that, but oftentimes uh, that is not the case, right? So it's specific populations are, are you know, it's, it's very hierarchical. It starts in Rome and it works its way down to the, to the local church, right? The opposite of that is an autonomous religion where they don't have a hierarchical system. And Islam is the best example of that. There is no hierarchy. There's no territorial organization that's happening there. And so what you see is vast differentiation, right? The Catholic Church tends to stay the same. They have the same message because it comes from one spot. It comes from a hierarchical, right, triangular-shaped system with the Pope on top, right, parishioners at the very bottom. Here, right, you, you don't have that, and it becomes very localized. And so Islam is going to look very different across time and space, right? Islam in Turkey is going to look very different than Islam in Saudi Arabia, right? And so, you know, it, it depends on, on local uh, customs, right, territorial organization, right? And so you get theocratic states, right, in some of these regions, right? So Saudi Arabia would be decent, right? Iran would, would, would kind of work that way. Um, the Taliban is going to be your best example when they ran Afghanistan, right? There is your uh, breakdown of the of the Catholic Church. Note that we have right, the the cathedral in St. Paul, um, you know, is is the big church for this entire region, all of Minnesota, right, and all of the Dakotas, right? That's that's our territory. So we so we you know we have that right right as a good example right in our local community, right? And these are the dioceses. Again, you have the archdi archdiocese right here, right? But that's kind of how things are broken. Right? So you got Duluth, you got Crookston, right? St. Cloud, New Ulm, and Winona all have have a diocese. All right. Uh, on to conflict, right? So we, we busted through 6-3 rather quickly. Let's talk about 6-4. Understand the difference between interfaith, right? When two religions class and intrafaith, right? When you have like Protestants and Catholics, right? Or uh, divisions within within a religion. Right? Northern Ireland is going to be ex our best example of that uh, when Shia and Sunni clash. Right? Um, we're going to look at, at in terms of interfaith. Right? You see a lot of that happening in Africa. Israel is a great example. Right? Israel Palestine conflict um, has some religious merit to it. India right now is absolutely um, hot when it comes to that stuff. Right? That they um, is is very much. Uh, um, Borderline oppressing, right, Muslims at this point, right? And Nigeria is also going to be fascinating, too. All right? So, uh, speaking of Nigeria, here's a green slide on Nigeria, right? If there was one country that we could choose to teach every uh, concept in, in AP Human Geography, we would probably choose Nigeria. Would you agree, Mr. Starr? I would agree, yeah. yeah. All kinds of things happening. <laughs> you got ethnic and tribal conflict. You got economic conflict. You have uh, agriculture being very different. Um, there's linguistic differences happening as well. Um, you know, keep in mind that, that uh, English is the formal language there, but there's there's many other, you know, not everybody speaks English there. Um, you have Muslim and you have Christian in the South. And so you, you got a ton of things. You got a pocket of development in Lagos. You have a um, petroleum area, all sorts of different things happening there, right? So there's religious conflict within Nigeria, something to think about, right? Again, we look at uh, conflict when, when religion and social change come together. 
you know, kind of the, the globalization, right, comes in, in conflict with, with uh, maybe a little bit of more of a fundamentalist approach to, to a religion. The best example of that is the Taliban in Afghanistan. Um, you know, you, you see a lot of uh, laws that were enacted during that time to, to get rid of um, Western influence there, right? You also see this in India with the caste system. Right, the caste system is fascinating. We're not going to go into detail, but in America, just keep in mind that we have a class system, right? Which is mobile. You can start off poor and work your way up to being rich, right? In the caste system, where you're born is where you stay. It's very much tied to the Hindu religion. It's the idea of karma and dharma, and and in your next life, you'll move up, kind of the social order. Um, so it's a longer game than than what you see in in a class system, and that is banned, right? That does not exist in India legally. Right? But that's a little bit like saying sexism doesn't exist in the United States or racism doesn't exist in the United States. They are legally banned. You can't do it. right? You can't legally discriminate, but we all know it still happens. right? So the caste system is gone, right? but we know that it's, you know, when you have thousands of years of one thing and then they just get rid of it, it's not really. Right? It's, there's still lingering effects. Of Very much ingrained in society. Yeah, there's the Taliban, right? They do things like blow up Buddhist statues because they think that that's graven images, right? That's worshiping false idols, that type of thing. So there's the before, right, in 2000, right? And then there's the after, where they got rid of that, that, uh, that ancient statue. All right, uh, when we get into religion, in, in, uh, interfaith religion, um, we, we have an idea comes up, the term fundamentalism. That's the idea of strict doctrine, right? And so you're going to... Keep in mind that every religion, right, there's going to be differences in, in opinions and, and how things happen, right? Maybe less so in hierarchical religions, but you're going to see that, right, that there's, there is a wide range of beliefs within each religion, right? And so with that, you're going to have some conflict, right? Best example we have is Northern Ireland and Ireland in example, uh, as an example, right? So Ireland, right, the, the uh Island of Ireland is broken up into two parts, right? There is uh, the southern part, which is independent, is its own country. That is the Republic of Ireland. Um, that's, in, in, that's Ireland, Ireland. And then you have Northern Ireland, which is in the northern part. And that is split between Protestants and Catholics, right? And so the counties of Northern Ireland, when they voted for independence, decided to stay with England, right? Keep in mind, colonization is happening here, right? And the Protestants are very scared that the Catholics are going to take over. And so they decide to stay um, with England during the time. And so you have this very bloody conflict uh, through the 70s and the 80s. Um, and the Irish, uh, you know, call it the Troubles, right? Like it's, you know, a hangnail or something, right? Or, or a cold cup of coffee. Um, these are, you know, heavy, heavy militias. The I Irish Republican Army is involved. There's acts of terrorism. There's assassinations. All sorts of different things happening there between Protestants and Catholics. That has largely been uh, diminished, right? There was a peace treaty that was signed, uh, that was signed while uh, President Clinton was in office. So it's been a while, right? And this is largely scaled down. But with Brexit, there are worries that the border between the two uh, European Union countries, Ireland and the UK, right? Now all of a sudden you only have one EU country. And they're worried that the troubles are going to happen again uh, due to the political environment there. Right? There's your Northern Ireland. We look at the percentage of Protestants and Catholics. You see, right, Northern Ireland being heavily dominated there. Right? Where you see Catholicism being the um, the, the dominant religion of the Republic of Ireland. All right? There's your Belfast being very much split. Right? This flares up every once in a while. Um, Again, you can read more about this in, in, in your book as well, all right? There's some graffiti. Um, you know, that's, that's happening, right? Uh, this is a very divided, right? It's a very segregated city based on, on religion, right? But based on denomination, it's not like this is Muslims on one side and, and, and Christians on the, on the other side. This is Protestant and Catholic, right? And you don't see as much divide in, in the United States. It really, really matters, though. In, Both Christians, you know, but yeah. just dealing with how they worship in different right. fashions. Mm -hmm. And again, there's colonization tied to this, right? There's there's other things happening with it, right? Um, and you're going to see that again in, in Israel-Palestine. You're going to see that, that it's not just a religious conflict, right? So here's fundamentalism. Again, we look at religious fundamentalism and extremism, right? We get into extremism is basically fundamentalism with, with terrorist action, right? 
with uh, you know, that, all of that. Yeah, it's important to believe that people who are fundamentalists don't are not always going to fly planes into buildings, right? This is not a something that happens, right? You don't have you can be fundamentalist and be peaceful, right? And and not uh, not all that, right? So not all fundamentalists are extremists, right? And not all people of a faith are fundamentalists. That is important to know, right? When we start thinking about our first thoughts when it comes to Muslims, right, in the United States, because the media perception is that you know, everybody believes in fundamental stuff, right? right? This exists in all religions. It's not just Islam, it's not just Christianity, right. whatever. I mean, we look at, we have examples of both right here as right. well. So the blowing got... up of abortion clinics, exactly. right? That is that is fundamentalism, right? People taking their beliefs and acting on it violently, yeah. right? So Christian fundamentalism, again, we look at uh, anti-birth control, family planning, all sorts of different things that, that you can look at, at here, right? So you see fundamentalism happening there. In Christianity, right? Again, a, a fast ride. Not all Christians believe all this stuff, right? But some do, right? Um, so keep that in mind, right? We look at Muslim fundamentalism, right? The case study on that is the Taliban, right? Um, and then, you know, the word jihad pops up as well. You can go through all of that and look at there's There's all sorts of different things from Wikipedia on what people were, uh, were expected to do, right? Um, when it kind of came to the Taliban, right? Very fundamentalist, um, and also very, I mean, uh, most of these things are gonna be um, centered uh, against women, right? Not every Muslim believes this, please remember that, all right? Uh, and so right, this is a good example, scale, right? There's your scale, there's Al Qaeda, right? The 9-11 perpetrators, there's the Taliban, right? There. right? That's that's that tiny little piece, right? Yes. These tiny little dots. You probably can't even see it from where you're sitting. Right. All of this is is the, is, is the Muslim, right? So keep in mind, your first thought, right, might be, oh my goodness, right? Muslims are going to do this, Muslims are going to do that, right? But your your last thought should not be that, right? You need to check yourself on this stuff, right? Um, because the media, right, only reports, right? These people. Yeah, yeah. these people. All right. Uh, Jewish fundamentalism also has, right, it's associated with the Orthodox branch, um, and you have different examples there. All right, so it leads us into an <laughs> enormous conflict yeah. that we can argue is it a religious conflict. We're talking about Israel versus Palestine right here. Um, it, it's, it started out as a religious conflict. It has become probably more of a territorial political conflict Resources. Today. So yeah. we will get into it. We'll talk about it in the next unit as well. Uh, but we're not going to go through everything of how this happened. It all started, I mean, we can go way back into history that we can go to when the United Nations divided up that territory and gave it to different people, which angered others. Uh, but really what you need to do is there's a couple of video clips that you should go and watch. Actually, you have to go and watch them. We, we made them, so you have to. Um, go down and watch those guys, and it gives you all the information you need. We can't go into all of it right now, and quite frankly, it's you're going to learn about this again next year, too. It's, it's an issue. It's a huge world issue um, still today. And historically, and so watch those video clips for this. Please do that. Yeah. Again, think about all of the timeline is one thing, right? But you know, kind of the, the modern conflict um, and, and how it's kind of kind of marred. And, and you have on one side you have a group that thinks the other side shouldn't be there, and on the other side you have the same thing, right? That they don't recognize each other as having a right to be in the space, right? It's very much tied to religion in that this, these are holy spaces, right, and places for, for uh, religions right, in that area. Which we talked about in the last video clip, this right, the last, last video. So. so again, you look at territorial gains, we look at the wars, we do all that stuff, we look at what's happening, right? Again, the idea that the Muslims, uh, viewed by Muslims, uh, that, the, that the Israeli government shouldn't exist, right, that they're illegal occupiers, right? The, uh, the Israeli government says, yes, we absolutely have a right to exist. This is our place, right? And that you folks, right, we were here first, right? So you have all sorts of different things going on with that, all right? Again, we look at Hamas, right, and, um, and, and the PLO, right? Hamas is the, the governing body of the Palestinian government. Um, we look at the divided uh, is uh, Jerusalem, right? And notice, right? There's the Church of the Holy Sepulchre right there, right? You have there's that. The Dome of the right? Rock. Mm -hmm. there's, there's the Dome the of the Rock. Western Wall. Right, so you have one, two, three, right? This is why things are, are divided, right? Three blocks of each mm -hmm. other. This is rough, 
right? This is rough stuff. All right, and again, we look at the dividing walls, right? Uh, you know, uh, around, um, you know, kind of the walling off of um, here's here's Israel proper, right? And then here's the West Bank, right? Which is, uh, and you have the walling off, and then you have Israeli settlements on the other side of the wall, not in Israel, but in in the Western Bank, the occupied area, former right? Palestine. And so this gets very controversial, gets very convoluted, right? Uh, neither side really sees the other person's, uh, the other side's right to exist within that space. All right, more stuff there. Right, there's a wall, all sorts again, of stuff. Watch, watch the video clips, guys, about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It's again, there's way more than we can talk about right here. Absolutely. Um, you can, you'll see, see a little bit about the timeline, and then you'll also see a little bit of what things are like today for people living there, younger people. So. That is that concludes uh, chapter six, QSU three and four. So hopefully uh, go, in, go on and watch those uh, Israeli-Palestinian conflict clips and uh, start getting yourself ready for your test. All right. Be good. Keep plugging away in your vocab.